Have you ever heard people say, I believe in God, but I don't have any time for organized religion? Or, I believe in Jesus, but I don't want to be part of the church. Or, sometimes I hear people say, I don't want to be part of the church because there's too many hypocrites in the church, to which I'm always tempted to say, there's still room for one more. <laughs> <laughs> This, this evening in the Gospel and in all the readings, we hear about the Holy Trinity. And the Catechism says, By sending his only Son and the Spirit of love in the fullness of time, God has revealed his innermost secret. That is, that God himself is an eternal exchange of love. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has destined us to share in that exchange of love. So in this, this weekend's Mass, we have a glimpse and insight into the very inner life of God. And we see it is a communion of persons in love. And he's inviting us into that own life, that experience of the communion of persons. In the story of creation, we see God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he made them. And so that means in God, there is this love between the Father and Son that is so perfect that it produces the third person who is the Holy Spirit, who is love. In the same way, the first man and woman he created were husband and wife. And their love for each other gives rise to a third person who is the child within marriage. So the family, the love between husband, wife, and child is an image of the Holy Trinity in God. And so the history of salvation in the scriptures is the history of God calling his people to himself, to clutch his people to himself, even when they have fallen and have turned against him, he still forgives and takes them back to himself. Our first reading comes from the story of Exodus where Moses just brought down the Ten Commandments and he finds the people have already fallen into idolatry. They're worshiping some other god rather than the Lord. They're giving their love to something else rather than to God, the Lord, who set them free from Egypt. But rather than destroying the people, as he is tempted to do, Moses says, do not allow these people to be destroyed. They have sinned grievously, but spare them. And the Lord reveals his real name to Moses as he passes by. This isn't some uh, scriptural author's reflection of who God is. It's God himself telling us who he is. The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin. Yet not declaring the guilty guiltless. He still acknowledges there is sin, but he forgives. So the, throughout the history then, the Lord is calling his people to himself. He says, as a bridegroom marries his bride, so will I marry my people. And in the New Testament, it finally is fulfilled. God himself comes to earth in Jesus and takes to himself his bride, which is all of us, the church. And so the two become one, the church and Jesus, the bride and the groom. So St. Joan of Arc says, to say Jesus, uh, yes, and the church, no, we can't really because Jesus and the church are one. It would be like saying to a, a, a man, I will like when you come around and visit Ray, but don't bring your wife. I can't stand her. I don't like her at all. If he loves his wife, he would be very offended by that. And the church is the bride of Jesus. Sure, the church has sinners in it, 
but Jesus is willing to forgive. The Lord clutches his bride to himself to give his life for the bride, so who is sinful and marred, but beautiful in his eyes. When he looks upon his church, when he looks upon each of us, he sees his beautiful bride that he has given his life for, and he looks upon us with great love and mercy and forgiveness. <laughs>